Hi friends, my name is Bhavya Mangla. I am IATF qualified auditor doing audit for the automotive sector for the last 18 years. I am again back with a very very interesting topic that what exactly is this problem solving technique. Well, in general, you know, day to day life, we find so many problems happening around us and we try to find some solution to that. It may be a problem related to internet, maybe our mobile, maybe we are driving a vehicle and it's broke down and then we find some solution and we find a permanent solution so that it does not repeat again. But the most important thing is that are we making sure that we are taking all the possible steps so that we can ensure that that problem should not repeat again. Something like if I could take an easy example that these days we are watching a lot of web series, say for example Game of Thrones or Money Heist. So in case there are 8 episodes and we are not watching all the 8 episodes, maybe 3, 4 or 5, are we going to enjoy that? The answer is no. Something similar is with problem solving technique that unless and until we are making sure that we are falling from step number 1 to step number last, there is a very high possibility that problem can repeat again. If I talk about industry, there are so many different techniques which are being used for problem solving. Sometimes we call it DMAC, which is related to Six Sigma or Global 8D, which Ford had initiated somewhere in 80s. And there are so many other techniques which are given by different customers, different manuals and ISO standards and IATF standards. So in this particular video, I'm going to talk about seven different steps through which I'm going to talk about the problem solving technique. So these seven steps are First of all, we have to define the problem. Then second step is containment, correction and interim action. The third one is root cause analysis. The fourth one is implementation of the corrective action. The fifth one is effectiveness of evaluation. The sixth one is horizontal deployment. And the seventh one is documentation, lesson learned and the promotion of awareness. Now starting with step number one, that is how to define the problem. Now this step is most important because if we are not defining the problem correctly, there is a very high possibility that whatever next six steps that you are working will not be reaching to the right conclusion. So we need to define the problem correctly. So as per the Kipling method, which was named after Rudyard Kipling's poem, I keep six honest serving men. It's a very popular system to define the problem. So it talks about what is the problem, why is the problem important? When did the problem arise and when does it need to be resolved? How did the problem happen? Where is the problem occurring? Who does the problem affect? And once we answer all these six questions, then we can define the problem in a very correct way. And once we can do that, we can go to step number two. So the step number two is talking about containment, correction and interim action. Because once the problem is there, we cannot immediately find the root cause and we cannot take all the action. So immediately we need to do something so that we can safeguard the customer and we can safeguard our processes also. So when we talk about correction, so primarily when we say correction, it is basically an action which is taken to correct the non-conformance. And it is not a corrective action, but it is just to make sure that whatever the problem that is in our hand, we just take some action just like we are doing reworking or maybe recalling or maybe we are disposing the non-conforming product or whatever other action that we take as a part of correction. When we talk about interim action, so primarily the intent is that till the time we find a permanent corrective action, let's do something so that the problem should not repeat again or the problem should not go further. So maybe it can be we call it as an emergency response action that we take at that time. And the third one is containment action. When we talk about containment action, it is an immediate action to prevent further use or distribution of the non-conforming material. So primarily the intent is to identify all the affected material and quarantine the non-conforming material within the organization. In case something is coming from the supplier, so identify it at that place. If something is in the transit, in the go down or maybe at the customer end, to identify all that so that suitable action can be taken. So that brings point number three, root cause analysis. Because unless and until we are clear that what exactly is the cause of a problem, we will not be able to find the right corrective action. So root cause analysis is very, very important. And in this entire seven steps, I think this is a step which requires more detailing and more in-depth analysis. And there are different techniques which can be used for the root cause analysis. 
So primarily the intent is to identify all the applicable causes which can be related to hardware or software and to see that we are asking sufficient number of times why why so that we can come to the right conclusion and it's also important to use a relevant cross functional team which can work and can identify that. And there are many different techniques which can be used for the root cause analysis. Some of the popular techniques include three layered fiber analysis. When we talk about three layer, we are talking about why the problem has occurred. And when the problem has occurred, the second is that why it has flown out. And the third is what is the systemic failure which has resulted in this particular thing. And then five is talking about why, 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 why. The second one is Ishikawa or the fishbone diagram that can be used. Another popular technique is PDCA, plan, do, check, act and then FMEA, failure mode and effect analysis, again a very, very popular technique which is being used in the industry. Once we are clear about the root cause, then comes point number four, that is corrective action. Because once we are clear that, okay, this is a cause which has, or maybe number of causes which are there, then we need to do some corrective actions and we need to find that what can be done with respect to that particular cause. So in this, we need to identify the most suitable corrective action and it can be related to both the software and hardware. It's also important that whatever actions that we are proposing, it should not be only suitable for that process or that operation, but also for the organization in totality. So it should be seen in a holistic manner. Then it should also eliminate, not only eliminate the cause, but also the prevention of the outflow. And then whatever actions that are being taken, that should be permanent in nature and where required, we need to implement the error proofing also. And once the corrective action has been taken, the next, the fifth step is about the effectiveness evaluation. That whatever actions that we have planned and implemented, whether they are actually effective or not. So there are different ways or different steps that can be used for that. So first of all, we need to validate whatever the corrective actions that we have taken so that we know that actually it is working. Then we need to see that uh, it is effective in terms of maybe a certain period, maybe a three months, one month, depending upon the volume that we are producing or it can be the number of units. Then we also need to see that that problem should not reoccur again. That can be another thing through which we can see that. And then it can be effectively verified through different working shifts, different operators which are working on different machines. And then the last and the most important thing that whatever actions that we are taking, it should not result in any adverse impact on any other process. That is very, very important. And once we are done with that effectiveness, that brings step number six. So here we are talking about horizontal deployment. Because there is always a possibility that whatever problem that has happened in one place, something similar can happen in some other location also. So rather than waiting that similar kind of problem can come there, it is better that we identify that which are the other areas where the similar problem can come and then we can take action with respect to that. So it is important that we need to identify the similar operations, processes or systems. Then we also need to see which are the processes which are responsible for the designing process the process which are responsible for designing the product and also we need to look into the different documentation that needs to be reviewed and updated with respect to that. So that brings step number seven and the last step. And again, this last step is very important because what all good work that we have done from step number one to six, if the step number seven is not effectively implemented, there is a high possibility that the same kind of problem can repeat again. So in step number seven, we are talking about documentation about lesson learned and promotion awareness to the people that this action has been taken. So there can be different steps to that. The first step is that we need to review and update our quality standards, maybe all the documents related to the quality controls, in case there are any work instructions, standard operating instructions, or there can be many other relevant documents which are there that needs to be reviewed and action needs to be taken with respect to that. So if I do a summary about the seven steps that I talked to, the first step is about defining the problem. The second step is about containment, correction and interim action. The third one is talking about the root cause analysis. The fourth one is about implementation of corrective action. The fifth one is about effectiveness evaluation. And after that, it is horizontal deployment. And the last and the most important seventh step is about documentation, lesson learned and the promotion of awareness. Well, my next video will be in series of it and in that I'm going to talk in detail about step number one, that is about definition of the problem. Well, regularly I'm getting a lot of feedback from your side and they're helping me to understand your expectations. So please do continue that. 
And in case you want to understand about this particular video in more detail, you'll find a link below. If you click that, you'll find a blog there. And there you will find this particular information in much more detail. And in case you're liking these kind of videos and blogs, you can always share with your friends and colleagues and you can subscribe to my YouTube channel and my website bhavimangla.com. Thank you.